Hello, this is Palico Padge, and welcome back to more The Curious Expedition. Welcome back to the more. Welcome back to The Curious Expedition. More of. There we go, that sounds better. We are halfway through our first expedition with Charles Darwin, and we're just about to leave the village which we trekked back to in the last episode, is, is the word I was looking for there. The last episode, in order to get our sanity back up to be able to finish off this trek without using up too much of our... Uh, inventory down here we don't want to be eating too much chocolate if we can help it and it's a small enough area for us not to have lost ground so we can just carry on so let's let's crack on enough jibber jabbering let's leave i told the man to the man i told the men to pack up and head and head it out as new adventures could be waiting around the next corner so where to next so we need to end up at the shrine the shrine's a long way we haven't traveled over into that region yet so we don't know exactly how many different points of interest there are there's at least three as you can see here so let's see i'm hoping there's going to be a, a gap here we can get to i just thought though because we were up on the hill over here before and it showed us the mountains after that if there was to be a mountain there we would have seen it unless this was blocking it but we won't know until we get there so let, let's crack on around we go there's a butterfly we could get there Ah, so we have a waterfall. I might as well travel to that and explore it. This waterfall was of enormous scale. It was an awe-inspiring sight. The water was fresh and cool. So this is the sort of place where you can rest overnight and gain your sanity if need be. I'm thinking we probably should. We have 35 sanity and we do need to travel to the other side of the region yet and we don't know what's around there. Let's 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 rest just once. We were prepared. <laughs> we prepared camp and told the people to rest. The night was bleak and everyone was seemingly worn out as we sat by the fire. Unexpected visitors arrived. We were approached by natives wearing full warrior dresses, so I can either invite them to the camp or send them away. Well, I'm not one to piss somebody off who's dressed as a warrior. So um, yeah, come sit down. No problems. We invited them to join us. They gladly accepted and sat down, sharing stories by the warming fire. So I can trade, recruit, or sleep. I think we'll trade with them. Ooh, they have a necklace. A golden necklace. An exquisite decorative jewellery. Makes perfect souvenir for your loved one at home. And it's worth a load. God damn it. I've got nothing to trade. That's, that's my problem. Right, well I could give him my torch. Is what if I took one torch back and one machete back? Well, I can't get away with two machetes, I've got two torches. No. Well the machete is more useful than the torches at the moment. So if I gave him the torch and took a machete, yeah we can get away with that. We shall do so. If I do that, I put it in number one. There we go. And I don't really want to recruit them. I know I'm going to lose uh, Animal Handler Guy, or at least that's what seems to be happening at the end of this expedition. But there are chances of recruiting new people at the start of each new expedition. So it's probably worth holding off because I'm bound to get a better deal when we go back. And at the moment he's giving me bigger inventory space, the Animal Handler. So it's worth holding on to him for the time being. So let's just go to sleep. The natives stood up, thanked us for the hospitality and headed into the darkness of the night. And we got a bit of sanity from them because we didn't piss them off, which is good. Good, good, good. After days of resting, we still enjoyed the gentle noise of the falling water. The natural beauty of this place was breathtaking. So uh, we don't want to rest anymore. We've got 76, which is enough by us. And no doubt our competitors are close to finishing, so let's leave. As we left, we became aware that our campfire had set some nearby bushes alight. Before we knew what happened, the fire began to spread. I believe Bikki Tata to be the cause of this incident and commanded him to be more prudent next time. Oh, Bikki. Oh, Bikki. So, uh, although it seems like we're currently on fire, we're not, but it will spread to the surrounding area. So we we've got to watch where we go now. And again, the, the compass is pointing sort of in this area here. So I'm thinking if we head up to here, check this out and then make our way around we should be able to get to the shrine pretty quick so what's the next bit 
The air was too hot to breathe and I could feel my skin melt away. Missy Winters tripped and fell. Her body immediately catched fire, but we were unable to reach her. She was a good friend. <sighs> so I've lost my donkey. My donkey is dead. And therefore the animal handlers become useless. Great. Great. Fantastic. <sighs> okay. Well... Yeah, not a lot I can do about that. I'm, I'm guessing it's because the fire moved in the same direction we did. So let's scarper. Let's scarper. That wasn't that wasn't good. That wasn't good. <laughs> right, we can choose to explore this place, which I don't really want to. No, let's explore it, and then we'll open it up, and then we'll leave. We're not too fussed by that. A little bit begrudged by what's just happened, and uh, Amelia's getting quite close to finishing, so we're gonna have to pull our finger out. So it's going to use a machete either way, which is going to be our last machete. So let's go here and see what's going on with this lookout. And we've come across an old camp. So hopefully this has got some stuff in. We, we approached an old campsite, the remains of an expedition that had failed long before us. The few mortal remains were long rotten and overgrown by the voracious plant life. So let's search the area. I was sure we would find something valuable here. We spread out and searched the area. To our surprise, one of the rotten crates still had some valuable equipment. So we have, oh, whiskey. So that'll help us with our Scottish soldier, which is very nice. We should take all those. And a Coston flare. This device was invented by Martha J. Coston. Originally intended to be used for signaling at sea, it can also be helpful in revealing nearby areas. Be careful with flammable material, like jungles, as we've already found out. But it's free, so we might as well take it. As we left, we became aware that our presence had attracted hungry wildlife. A panther. Good times. So now it's showing that the pyramid is sort of down here. And we can also upgrade somebody. So, uh, from now on, because Vicky is already promoted, it takes two region points in order to promote him higher. And as it stands now, because we have some whiskey, it's probably going to be better to get Mackie up than it would be to, as I said, waste it on Sikoka because we know he's not going to be coming with us. So oh, let's promote him. He will do his best. Damn right. Damn right. And uh, we might as well drink a whiskey because we have more chocolate in the moment. So it takes longer for that to disappear than it would do the whiskey. And hopefully that should take us up quite a bit. 54. Not too bad. Not too bad. So let's crack on here. Now, with this, it's showing us that the, the, the best way of getting around there f for the sake of sanity is to travel all the way around past the panther and onto this one here. You can actually set waypoints, though, to go where you want to go, even though it might cost you more. So for the sake of trying to avoid the panther as much as possible, I am going to go northeast. Yeah, that's northeast. But as you can see what it says down by the panther at the bottom here, the aggro chance, here we go, the aggro chance is 100%, so it's probably going to follow us anyway. So we should go there, and then we should go there. Travel. Yep, he's honing in on us. And, right, we are going into attack mode. So this is the, uh, the attack situation here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, now the panther's pretty hard he has quite a lot of health and uh, the way it works is you roll your dice and it throws up different types of uh, symbols and as you can see each dice generally have two different types of picture on and then a couple of blank sides if they're blank you can't use them and depending on what the picture is means that you can do different attacks or defensive rolls on your go now generally it's always best to try and throw up as much attack and as uh, even a defense as you can depending on what's against you. Now a panther hits like a brick so you want to put as much shielding and damage as you can per go. So taking that into account we'll do a riposte and hit him and then we can roll again. We get three rolls so uh, it's always worth um, trying to use them as much uh, uh, as best you can. Now uh, the nice thing about this is if you see something you like here so for instance I can put these out and get a shield but if I choose not to put that out and roll again I save this without using it. So if I roll again hopefully we'll get the there we go the gun. So that's a quick shot which we can't use of anything else whilst it would vibrate so we might as well 
shoot the panther and then use those two together as a lookout to get two more shield. And then that's the end of our go. No more rolls left. So let's end the ra round and now it's the panther's turn. Yeah, we, we fared okay. Uh, we could have done a lot worse there. We did have quite a bit of shielding, so every time he hit us, parts of the, that damage was uh, offset, which is always good. And here we can go with another riposte, which puts our shielding up. There's nothing worth keeping here. I prefer the eyes, because if I can get two eyes in the shotgun, uh, we get a, quite a high damage hit. But I just don't think we're going to be that lucky. Last roll. Oh, that's lucky. Oh, no, it won't let me. Okay, so quick shot again. Maybe it's two of those. And another shield. And then that round. Oh, he does not like Bicky, does he? he? At all. And he's bleeding, so that's not good. Okay, last round. Now, what can we do with the shotgun? He's only got two health left, so that's enough by itself. So let's kill him. We stripped what was useful from the dead. So we have the panther skin, which is worth some money. Now, the fangs are worth a little bit of money. They're, they're worth more to trade. But um, I don't have any space left. As you can see, these are blacked out. So taking that into consideration, if I take the fangs, you can carry them, but you, I don't think you can move whilst you've got them. You have to delete something or drop something. So if I take that and finish, and now it says one item slot is overburdened, so I can't move. I can then drink my drink. Oh, like so. And there we go. We have got all our slots filled up. And we're by the shrine. So let's see what's going on with the shrine now. We stood before a temple comprised of huge stones. Its stone walls were covered with ornate engravings. Waist-high stairs led up to an enormous doorway. A thick layer of sand seemed to surround the structure. Now usually in this last description here, it gives you an idea on the sort of bad thing that can happen if you choose to loot the shrine. Generally, the rule is always loot the shrine, because what you'll find in there, if you're skilled enough or if you're lucky enough, which is probably more, more accurate, um, you can uh, escape with the bits you've got and not be affected by what's going to happen. So there's going to be something that's going to happen with sand with the shrine, I think. So let's have a look. We carefully entered a well-preserved ceremonial chamber. It was a truly awe-inspiring sight. Our steps echoed as we approached the sacred altar. So let's investigate the altar. So we have mini puppets, small puppets that can take away any fears before going to sleep, which I don't think we're going to be using now because we're going to be heading towards the pyramid. But we do have this lovely fat golden mask, a mask made of pure gold. It seems like this was used in sacrificial ceremonies. So. What do I want to drop? I know I've picked up the cost and flares, and they are very good at opening up areas if you are stuck in a place where you can't see what's going on. That's probably going to come in useful on the next expedition. And for my playthroughs of the last few alphas, I know that the animal teeth aren't worth that much. So let's get rid of the animal teeth and pick up the mask. And let's leg it. I would not leave empty-handed. We took the artifact from the altar. We grabbed what we could and hurried outside as everything around us began to wither and die. We could not tell how, but it seemed like we had caused some kind of shift in the climate of this region. Okay, so as I move, all this will slowly get killed off, I presume. And it would appear that I need to head in this direction over here. Uh, and we've also found everything we can in this region, so there's nothing stopping us going, I guess. Let's 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 go, let's go. So what's the most convenient way of going about that? See, if I go that way, it's taking me through the jungle, but we don't know what's around here. And there could be a magnetic mountain here, but I have discovered everything. Hmm. Let's head to the hill. We can, we can afford to get to the hill. Let's get head to the hill and it should open. Oh, let's cancel travel. There we go. Wow, it is dying all behind us. But there we are. We are we are at the pyramid. Mission successful. There was a golden pyramid enthroned above the landscape. Overcoming all the obstacles, we had yet survived. Let's enter the pyramid. After weeks of travelling, great pride overcame me. 
I knew that this name, Charles Darwin, would not doubt, would doubt. I knew that this name, Charles Darwin, would down in the annals of world history. Oh, dearie. I congratulated Sir Cocker, but instead of excitement, I saw sadness in his eyes. He mentioned that he would be glad when I was gone. He stated that he would not follow me to the civilised world. Bastard. And that means I've lost a load of space as well. Hmm. I don't think that affects me now I'm back now. I hope not. I hope not. Ingrateful. I could have shown you the world, Sakaka. I could have shown you the world. Oh, well, never mind. Let's finish the expedition. So we have success. And uh, I'm just going to click the button because that will show us where we are. Uh, so our current fame for finishing uh, at the start was 10. Finding the golden period, we automatically get uh, 100. Uh, I finished first, which was fantastic. So I get a bonus 200. So our new, fa our new base fame is 210. So let's finish the expedition. Now, whenever you finish an expedition, you do get to choose a, a medal for finishing. And this is the perk which helps you on your next ex expedition. So let's see what's available this time around. We have Impetus, which reduces the base sanity cost for traveling, which is very useful. We have Desert Explorer, which is reduced movement co costs in the deserts, which can be useful if you're traveling in a desert. Obviously, if you're not, it's, it's pointless. And we have Lone Survivor. Survive a little longer when all alone. Well, you only need Lone Survivor when you are close to dying, and it only expands your life by a, a few goes if you can't find any way of getting your sanity up. So it's definitely worth going for in Petus and having the base sanity cost for traveling lowered because therefore your sanity lasts a lot longer. So we shall go for that. Huzzah! And now we get to see where we stand as far as the other explorers are concerned. Now, these numbers that are represented here are taken into consideration that they have come back from their treks and they've already pawned all of their, their goodies. So this is how it stands until the end of the next trek. So because of that, I can judge whether it's worth giving these bits to the museum for added fame in order to keep up with New Maruno here or whether to sell them and get money for them for the next expedition. Now, I didn't use up any food, so I've got a fair bit of food and I have got a lot of carry space. So um, I do have to be careful on what I intend to um, buy on the next expedition because I haven't, have, haven't got the space and it means anything I buy, I might have to drop in order to pick up better stuff. So here it's probably best if I gift the gold, which should put me up pretty close against Amelia. And the panther skin is worth 20, so we'll do that. And the mask is worth 70, which will throw me a hell of a lot, a hell of a lot ahead. But I won't have a lot of money to spend on the next one. So it's probably best if I sell that and get some more money. So I've got a bit of cash, a bit of cash money dollar to spell, uh, spend. And uh, we're not too far off the lead, which is a comfortable place to be. You don't want to run too far ahead. Now, it does only take the one bad expedition in order to put you behind. But as it stands right now, we're on even Steven with, with Amelia. So we've got nothing to worry about there. And then this is where we choose our next expedition, which, as it turns out, are two drylands. So there was a chance there'd be desert within those drylands. But as I said, in Peters is definitely the better one to be having overall because it just means you, you have a lower cost each time. So that's the end of the first expedition. And this is almost 20 minutes so we must well call this the end of this episode thank you for watching as always uh, a like and subscription if you haven't already is always appreciated and i shall catch you on the next one take it easy